Alrighty guys, the uh, topic at hand today is Coulomb's Law. Let's spell that on out here. Coulomb's Law. And Coulomb's Law talks all about charge and the force between them. So before we dive into the law, let's talk for a second about charge. Let's consider just a balloon and pretend that you've rubbed that balloon on your head and now it can stick to stuff. And it's like, why is that possible? Well, in the most simplest sense, rubbing the balloon on the hair is moving charges around, right? We know that on the smallest level of matter, we have a positive nucleus that also has neutrons in there, and then it's kind of encircled by this cloud of negative electrons. And so we have, as just a fundamental characteristic of matter, these things that we call charges, right? And that's kind of a, a tough one to really nail down. What does that actually mean? But we've decided that there's some trait in matter that we call charge and we give it these names, positive and negative, because we see attraction and repulsion depending on what you do, okay? So coming back to the balloon, we have this idea that if we rub it, we can have excess charge. So starting out, the balloon is already charged, right? There's protons and electrons in there, but then when we rub it, we're giving it an excess of one. So let's pretend when we rub the balloon on our head that some extra electrons end up on the balloon. So now it's more negative, okay? Now, how do we decide how to give a number value to that? Well, a person named Coulomb gets the unit of charge named after him, a single electron has 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs worth of charge on it. Now that number seems super random and it's because the amount of one coulomb was set well before our clear understanding of how much charge were on things, right? So this number seems really random and, and tiny now. One proton is also 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. It's just that that would be a positive amount and this would be a negative amount. Okay, so let's connect this over to actually a Coulomb's law sort of thing. So we're going to say we've got our balloon here. It's got some extra negative charge and we're going to actually give that a number. We're going to say it has 10 micro coulombs worth of overall negative charge, okay? Now, Coulomb's law comes into play as the force between charges. So let's pretend that we have another balloon. It also had its neutral beginnings, but we rubbed it, added some negative charge, and it also has negative 10 micro coulombs worth of charge. Due to being charged, there's now going to be a repulsion force between these balloons. Coulomb's law describes how much that force will be. It says that that electric force will be equal to a constant that we call K times the amount of charge one times the amount of charge two divided by the distance between them squared. So the last thing to add to my example, let's say these balloons are half a meter apart. Okay. Now, in this equation, the Q values are the charges in coulombs, R is distance in meters. So we're all prepped to go. The last thing is to mention this K value. Since we're going to use coulombs and meters, K is just a specific number. K is 9 times 10 to the 9th. And then it has some goofy units I'm going to come back to in a minute once we enter numbers here. So electric force equals... 9 times 10 to the 9th, we'll come back to the units. Q1, 10 micro coulombs. So 10, and then micro means millionth, so times 10 to the negative 6th coulombs. And then another 10 micro times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, all divided by the distance squared. So looking at units, we're going to have Coulomb squared divided by meter squared, and we want this equation to give us newtons. So the units on this are newtons times meter squared to cancel those over Coulomb squared to cancel those. So pause me for a second. We're going to calculate. Okay. When you put all that in your calculator, be careful with scientific notation, you should get 3.6 newtons, which is actually pretty huge when you think about balloons being rubbed. That's probably unrealistic, which just means that 
my made up 10 micro coulombs would be too much for real balloons. But that's what Coulomb's law would say based on the amount of charge and the distance between them. If you're taking some notes off of this, coming back here to our constant, our k value, the units are newtons times meter squared over Coulomb squared. Final consideration, Coulombs are always going to be pretty small in pretty real scenarios because a single Coulomb is insanely huge. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the amount of a Coulomb was defined kind of before we knew how much was on individual little charges. And the amount of a Coulomb makes a little more sense when we start thinking about like electricity and circuits, which will be coming in a few days. Hopefully that uh, helps you out on Coulomb's Law and understanding units and how to apply it and what it all means.